So I just got the new M1 Max MacBook a couple days ago and I instantly wanted to run some tests. Over the past week, I've been looking at other videos on YouTube of people testing it out and creating reviews for it and honestly, the results are pretty impressive. Now, the main videos I'm editing right now are music videos and these YouTube videos. So I'm curious about what the export times will be for one of my music videos with the M1 Max chip. So after I run some simple tests, we'll be looking at the export times for a full music video. And I currently edit in Premiere Pro, so that's what we're gonna be focusing on. These are the quick specs for my new MacBook. It's the base 16 inch M1 Max with 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. In my couple days of usage so far, it's been super smooth, so no complaints, no hiccups. Granted, I've only done these tests that I'm gonna show you, as well as some internet browsing, but also by the time this video is up, I would have edited this video on the new MacBook as well. So if there's anything else that comes up, I'll be sure to throw that up on the screen. I do wanna quickly mention a couple things I like about the new MacBook, and that's the keyboard and the speaker. As far as the keyboard goes, it just feels really nice to type on, and I don't really know how to explain it. It's one of those things that it's better experienced in person, so you can get that full effect. And also, as far as the speaker goes, it just um, it just sounds really nice. It's clear, it's loud, um, the bass sounds good, and again, it's one of those things that's better experienced in person. Battery life seems to be pretty amazing. I've had it a couple days and only plugged it up once, and even when I plugged it up, it was still at, I think, about 50%, so technically, I could have kept going, and I know that my previous MacBook would have died quicker. Speaking of the old MacBook, these are the specs. So keep this in mind because this is what I'll be comparing it to. It's the 2019 15 inch model, 2.3 gigahertz, eight core i9, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it has the Radeon Pro 560X graphics. All right, so we'll go ahead and get to the test and we'll be starting with the M1 Max. All right, so we're in Premiere Pro right now and I have a 4K clip right here recorded on the R5, recorded externally through the Ninja 5. And this is the way I normally record, so this is a good test. And um, what I wanna do is do a scrub test um, in full quality, and then also I will throw a LUT on it and uh, do a, a test there as well. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We'll just uh, drag it onto the timeline and be in full quality right here. We'll just kind of scrub through it. Turn the music down. And it doesn't seem to be any any type of lag or drop frames at all in full quality. So that's dope. Um, I know that on my uh, my last MacBook, there might have been some drop frames, uh, drop frames here and there. Um, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't this smooth if I can remember. All right, cool. So we'll drop uh, an adjustment layer. Go ahead, throw that on top. And um, let me just throw a LUT on this one. Let's grab this one. Boom. So we got the LUT on there. Still in full quality. And no lag whatsoever. Dope. All right, so what I wanna do now is duplicate this 4K clip right here. And um, I'm just gonna drop down the scale. Let's just do 80%. And so we have uh, two 4K clips stacked, and we'll see if there's any lag here. And again, no lag, and we'll even duplicate it one more time. Let's drop that down. Now we have three 4K clips stacked on top of each other, and no lag whatsoever. We'll even play this to see it play out. And it's perfect. Okay, so what I wanna do right now is try an effect called Denoiser. And this was pretty taxing on my last MacBook and it would lag pretty badly and pretty much wouldn't play. So I wanna try it on uh, this new MacBook and see how it handles it. So we'll get rid of these extra clips and we'll throw the Denoiser on here. So boom, we have the Denoiser up, um, just basic settings, and then we're still in full quality. So we'll just go ahead and play it. And we can see we're getting, it's not 100% smooth. Not 100% smooth. Um, let's go ahead and drop this down to one half. 
and it's a lot better. That's a lot better. Um, yeah, and again, I don't think it's 100% necessary to edit on full quality all the time, so this wouldn't really be a problem for me to um, have to edit this in one half quality. So again, that's dope. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is do an export test. So um, this clip that I have right now is two minutes and 13 seconds. We'll just trim it to two minutes exactly, just for the sake of the test. So let's go ahead and trim that. Boom. So we're at two minutes exactly. And I'm gonna export it using the settings I normally use when I export music videos. So I already have it set up, 4K music video. Boom. And I'll show you guys the, the settings here as well. Um, so it's pretty, pretty much the 4K um, ma uh, maximum depth. And then um, have high profile level 5.2. And then we're gonna do a two pass and um, we'll have a, a target bit rate of 50. Boom. So again, maximum render quality and uh, we'll actually disable use previews. So I'm gonna get a timer started here so we can keep track of how long this takes. Um, so I have the stopwatch right there. So we're gonna go ahead and start this up and export. All right, so we're at just about 80% right now and I can kind of hear the fans. They aren't too loud. I almost didn't notice they were even on, but I guess at some point the fans did kick on. All right, so the video finished and we're at just about eight minutes on the export time. Again, we did use a two pass, so that means it ran through the video export twice. And uh, so if we did do it one time, it would have just pretty much been four minutes. And that's really good, especially with this being a full 4K clip at two minutes. So real quick, I wanna jump in and say that when I'm using a two pass, it's using software encoding. If I jump down to a one pass, I can enable hardware encoding, which will significantly decrease export times. When I did that, I exported the same project in 44 seconds on the M1 Max and two minutes, 35 seconds on the i9. I just wanted to add that in. All right, so we're back in Premiere Pro on my previous MacBook and we have the exact same clip this is the same 4K clip from the previous test. So we're gonna do the exact same thing and compare the differences. So we'll drag it onto the timeline and we have it in full quality and we'll do a scrub test. It's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. And we're gonna add in an adjustment layer and put the LUT on it. We'll scrub, still in full quality. It's looking pretty good, not bad at all. All right, so what we're gonna do is duplicate the clip. Full quality still, so we'll drop the scale down 80%. Scrub through, still looking good. Go ahead and play that. And that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and duplicate it again. Put this to 60. Scrub again. And that's looking pretty good as well. I'm actually surprised. It's been a minute since I edited a video on here, so it might just be fresh, but um, sometimes I do get lag. Um, on this on this MacBook, so it's doing pretty good right now. One thing to mention is the fans have already kicked on on the MacBook, and uh, on the new MacBook, it took maybe halfway through the export for the fans to come on, so that is one thing to note. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a denoiser on this clip, and again, whenever I use this effect on this MacBook, it would be pretty taxing, so I don't expect it to perform that well, but we'll see. So boom, we have the denoiser on there. The same um, basic basic uh, settings here. And so we'll go ahead and play in full quality. And that is 
<laughs> pretty terrible. It was pretty bad. Um, on the newer MacBook, when we when we put this on in full quality, it would play a little bit better than this, but it was still dropping frames. But this is definitely not great. We'll go ahead and drop this to one half, and let's play it. And we're still dropping frames. We'll even try one fourth. Just see. Okay, it's looking pretty good on one fourth. All right, cool. So we had to drop it down to one fourth to get it to play smoothly. And on the newer MacBook, we were able to play it smooth on one half. All right, cool. So we're gonna do the export test. And again, we will clip this at the two minute mark. And I'm gonna use the exact same settings that I used on the first test. And the first test, again, we ended at eight minutes and we will do a two pass again and see how long it takes. We'll go ahead and get our stopwatch ready and export. All right, so we finished at a little over 14 minutes for this export test. And that may not be a big deal when you compare it to the eight minutes, but I think about proportions. And if you have a project that takes maybe two hours on the newer MacBook, it might be a big project. Then you try to export that same one on this one, then you might be looking at closer to four hours. And again, that may not be a big deal either. Um, it just depends on what you, know, you value or what your preference is as far as what your editing machine can do. All right, so I just wanted to run a few quick tests, nothing too crazy. Um, there definitely is a difference and I'm excited to start working on more projects with the new MacBook. So I did also run an export test off camera on a full music video I created. And in this edit, there's a bit of everything. So there's 4K Ninja 5 footage, 4K internal R5 footage, some 4K 60s, 4K 120s, Premiere effects, and also some After Effects effects and graphics. So the i9 MacBook exported at 48 minutes and the M1 Max finished at 39. But before we look at these times as being crazy long, I found out the reason for it. So in this particular project, I used an effect called noise on a good amount of clips. And this effect is pretty demanding. I did another export taking this effect out the project completely and had an export time of eight minutes on the M1 Max with a two pass. I ran a single pass test with hardware encoding without the noise effect and it exported the entire video in a minute 33 seconds. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to know as far as the M1 Max and Premiere goes, go ahead and let me know and I will try to answer it. But if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop it a like, jump down in the comments, let me know what y'all think, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. It only takes a second and I will see y'all real soon in my next one. Peace.